All right, Nick, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Bruce. I appreciate it. So tell everybody uh, who's listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube or wherever they're watching to the podcast, uh, tell us where you're from and what you're up to. Yeah, so uh, I'm the owner of uh, Toss and Fire Wood Fired Pizza. We're based in uh, Central New York, uh, Syracuse area. Um, we currently operate uh, two brick and mortar locations uh, and three food trucks, and we're in the process of opening a uh, satellite location inside of a beer hall in the actual city of Syracuse right now. That's amazing. So, did you start with the food truck? Yeah, so I actually started with a pull behind trailer. It was literally just a trailer with an oven, not um, not like one of those Forno Bravos, but like very similar. Like it looked very similar. It was uh, from a company in Texas, uh, Breadstone Ovens. Okay, yeah. I, I, that's when was that? When did you first start? That was 2015. We started with the with the pull behind trailer. Uh, so basically, we had a pull behind trailer with like a tent and like a, a refrigerator. I used to have to lift down from a from like a pickup truck every time we did an event, and uh, we would set everything up from from start to finish. It was crazy. That's awesome. So you started with that, and then you went to a food truck. Was the next step, and then a brick and mortar. Yeah. So. Uh, so the, the second year we were in business, I ended up buying a like a box trailer that had an oven in it from a friend of mine that I grew up. Uh, we worked in a pizza shop together when I lived in Connecticut, which is where I'm from originally. Um, so they were selling this trailer, and it was a really good opportunity. And I, I ended up getting it from them and trying to figure out how to operate too. And going through those kind of kind of bumps along the way was was definitely an interesting experience. That's crazy. So what was the so the food? So you started with the trailer, which is kind of obvious, like for anybody listening can kind of set that up. The food, the truck version of it, what kind of truck was it? Was it a, was it like designed for pizza or what kind of truck was it that you purchased to kind of create your pizza truck? Yeah. So the first truck we bought, uh, all of our food trucks are from MasterChef Kitchens, which is based in like Brooklyn area. Um, okay. They, they're all box trucks, like, like those standard, like... Our newer ones are the Morgan Olsen ones, so they're like built for food trucks more than than just like a regular old UPS truck or something like that. But um, when we bought the first one, we designed it. We were um, we were doing all these different events, obviously, right? Like catering yeah. is is one aspect of our business, but um, another pretty big ba- aspect of our business is like concerts. We do like these big concerts, and we partner with. Uh, with Aramark who handles like the venue in our area um, and we needed more space and a bigger oven. So that was kind of how we got into the first truck. Um, and then from there we just kept like, we we're like, I needed a bigger truck to, to kind of handle more volume. And wow. uh, so we built our second one. And then the third one I ended up buying from a friend uh, who I had met kind of in the pizza community and he was moving and it was built at the same place that I had gotten my first two. And it was just like, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get rid of my trailers and, and buy this one. It just made sense. That, so that friend you bought that from, how did you meet him? Like on Instagram or online or in person? Uh, in uh, There's like these Facebook groups that are for like mobile wood fire operators. And uh, when I was starting, I was in, like, I'm still in the groups, but like I was yeah. getting a lot of information from these. I, was t- I wanted to talk to people who did it. I wanted to know like what worked for you, what didn't work for you, what, what are your challenges, what are like, you know, how do you handle this crazy business, you know? Yeah, that's smart because I just talked to, uh, I just did a YouTube video, Anthony Allen from uh, Auto Pizza about Dough Commissary. Mm-hmm. And he said, the Yeah, same I watched thing. that. Like, yeah, that was a good. It was really interesting to be walking around the dough commissary, and something he said to me really stuck out. He's like, "I'm like, would you do it all over again if you could know what you know now?" He's like, "Yes, but I would do it differently." And he said exactly yeah. what you said. He's like, "I would go out and try to find people who have actually built what I'm thinking of building, and then like pick their brain about all the questions I have and like what they did wrong and the mistakes they made, so I wouldn't have to make those." like he did with that because he absolutely said he made a lot of yeah. that. so it sounds yeah, like you did no. the same thing i did i definitely did you know and i and i talked you know i talked to food truck operators who weren't doing pizza in general and like just to get like because every every like area is different like the syracuse market is completely different than the austin texas market like it's everybody is different everybody does things different as much as there are similarities to being a food truck operator there are so many differences that are that are specific to your market how much does it cost to like if I wanted to start a food truck and I had a mm-hmm. budget, but I wanted it to be like specifically made for pizza, how much money do you think I need to put aside to like buy a truck and like build it out? 
So trailers are much more like are a cheaper option. That's why I got into the business with trailers because it was yeah. it was something I, I could do. I started my whole business probably the way you're not supposed to, but I started my whole business on like a credit card and was like put my whole trailer on this credit card and was like let's just see what happens and. Um, but the food trucks, you know, I think my first truck was was a little bit over a hundred thousand, um, and then my bigger truck, which this thing's a monstrosity. It's like, it's like a twenty something foot kitchen with wow. four coolers, and this, and I have I have all Pavese ovens, um, and you know, it's just it's a huge truck that was closer to like one fifty. Okay, so it's like, but it's still cheaper than uh, you know building out. I mean, it's probably. It's probably similar to building out a restaurant, right? Like 150,000, you could probably build out a small pizzeria and a small yeah. footprint if you had to in a brick and mortar. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it really depends what you're doing. It depends yeah. what you're doing. So like if you're building from the bottom up, you know, you could spend, you could spend 500,000 to a million dollars, but like I've never done that. I've always gone into places that were restaurants previously yeah. and then just kind of made them our own. That's always been the way I've, I've gone into anything I've, any of our like expansions, it's always been like, okay, well, here's a location. One location, our first one was operating as a pizzeria, a very small takeout pizzeria. And we were able to get all the equipment as part of our lease. So all I had to do was put in a wood fire oven and paint, you know, oh, that's not so bad. it was a, yeah, that was an easy way to get into it. Did it have a good layout? Sometimes you go into a pizzeria, and as an operator who operates, you look at it, and you're like, what the hell were these people thinking? This is not even close <laughs> to how I would lay it out. Not really, no. I mean, it was a, it was a mess. It was, I used yeah. to drive by it. I used to drive by it because there was like a, like a, one of these like big stores where you could buy commercial food, right? And uh, we would, I would drive by it to go to the store, and they'd be open on Friday night, and then they'd be closed the next Friday night yeah. or at – Tuesday lunch or whatever day it was. And I was like, what are these guys doing? Like, and I ended up, I had a real estate person that I met and he was like, oh, I know the landlord. Let me find out. And he was like, these guys haven't been paying rent. Like if you're interested, come check it out. And that's, that's kind of how we got into it. Yeah. I go into pizzeria sometimes and like sometimes, you know, there's, there's amazing pizzerias I've been in that are like, wow, I've really learned a lot just by watching them. And then sometimes mm -hmm. I go into a pizzeria and I'm like, wow, this hurts my feelings. Like as a pizza, yeah. pizza guy, like in a yeah. pizza operator, this hurts my feelings. Can I just st time out for a second? Can I just show you like three things that's going to help your life a lot yeah. easier? You know? Yeah. Can I have five minutes of your time? Because you really exactly. should do it this way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to help you out a lot. Just take, just listen yeah. to these three things. Uh, because sure. you go in there and it's like, it's a mess. And it's just like, it's, it's probably somebody who never, never owned or worked in or operated a pizzeria and they just kind of like, all right, I want to buy a pizzeria. This is what I think it should be. And they just kind of go for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that's, I think that's common in the restaurant business in general that like, yeah. you know, I mean, I've, I've, I came from a background in restaurants, but like I had never operated a restaurant. Like I was a manager for like a chain before I got into this business, but like, and I worked in them, but like, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just talked to people. That was, that was what I, that was the easiest way I could get information was just talking to as many people as possible who were willing to talk to me. So you, when you work, it's like a lot different from managing a pizzeria than it is owning one, right? But the difference is like the back end stuff, the finances, the accounting, mm -hmm. the, you know, everything that you comes in and is on the shelf you've paid for. And, you know, there's yeah. money that's going out that's coming out of yeah. your pocket. So that's probably what you needed to learn, right? Because managing mm -hmm. a pizzeria is the same whether you own it or, op or, or just work in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's just the seeing the whole picture. You know, it's yeah. seeing everything. You know, everything is important. It's not just about how your shift is or whatever. It's about, you know, the entire customer experience. How are they hearing about you? How are they seeing you? Where are they seeing you? How is your social media? How is your website? How is your, you know, all of these things? And, and that was all stuff I had to learn. Like, I had no idea. That's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a whole different ballgame, right? Like, there's so many things that every manager of a pizza shop or restaurant is like, I could own this place. But you, you don't really know what it's like to own the place until it's actually your signature on the line that says you're yeah. responsible for everything that goes on. And if yeah. it's not busy, most people are, who work there are just like, okay, great, it's not busy, I, get, I don't have to do much. But when you're the owner, you're like sweating because yeah. you need every sale that comes in every day in order to be able to make it. You know the bills that are coming in. You know yeah. the you know you know the the loan that you, maybe you took out that has a that's attached to your house one way or another yeah. or you know whatever it may be. It's all you know. Obviously, it all matters to matters to the owner more than it matters to anybody else for sure.
So you're in a unique situation because you operate like most people go from food truck and they're like, all right, I go from a food truck to a brick and mortar. But you're mm-hmm. still kind of operating both. So you have a unique perspective when it comes to like, the differences. Yeah, I mean, I love the mobile business. I, you know, if we're in a market that's seasonal, so it's like it snows here and it's like nobody's, there's there's probably 80 food trucks in the central New York market. But when I started, there was five. Wow. Um, but it's blown up a lot over the last week. This will be our 10th season starting this year. But um, I love the mobile business. I love the, like, to me, like being able to go to a wedding one day, to a concert the next day, to a graduation, to a farmer's market, to a brewery, like all these different things. You're always seeing different areas. You're always, you're traveling, you're meeting people, you're interacting with people. You're, it's just, it's just, it's just fun. I just like it. Is it better than the, the brick and mortar? Like which one would you prefer? If I could just run food trucks and like we were, we could do it all year at the level we do it during our season, I would do food trucks all day. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. the only holdback for you is the winter, right? Because it's not yeah. as busy. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, if you were the in winter like, is too cold. Uh, or the south somewhere, you'd be uh, doing food trucks all year round. Yeah. I mean, it could work. You know, but again, that kind of goes back to like every market is so different. I've, I've talked to operators in other areas and I tell them the kind of things that I do. And they're like, we don't have that here. We don't have like we do big food truck rodeos here. That's a really big thing in Syracuse. And like yeah. there's markets that like the food trucks don't even talk to each other. They don't want to be friends. They don't want right. to like, you know, they don't work together in that way. And then there's markets that do. And they have these awesome, huge events that that work out, you know. Do you think it's the winter thing is like to your advantage? Because, you know, I'm from Boston, so similar weather to what you're in, and the markets are the same. Like, you when you live in the Northeast, everything you do outside is condensed into like five months. Yeah. Because yeah, you can go outside in November and October and December, but like nobody really wants to go out in those yeah. months like yeah. they do in the summertime. You know. So is it because is it because everything's condensed in that small time frame that people just are out more and it's busier and they collaborate more? I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of excitement when food truck season starts. Like it's, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, there's like an unofficial end usually every year. It's usually the end of October. And then the unofficial start is usually sometime in April. Yeah. Um, and there's just, there's like this built up excitement. People are excited to get outside and go to these events. And like some of the events are in parks. We do a big, uh, there's a big food truck festival here called the Food Truck Battle. And that's like, that's like this massive thing that sees like 20,000 people come to it. It's a one day thing. And like, wow. Um, it's really cool and and there's like 50 50 something food trucks at it and they all do like samples and uh, you know it draws people from all over New York State that come for it I heard some people came from Canada to come to it uh, that's crazy here yeah that's awesome so it's just like a big parking lot with a bunch of food trucks and people just want like it's almost like a food truck carnival yeah we do it at the state fair here so it's like actually like it's a venue that has you know, bathrooms and grass area. And like, it's, it's a place people know and they go to events at in the area. So, um, but a lot of our other events that we do are like, it'll be in a dead mall parking lot and people are like, let's go to the dead mall and go to the food trucks. And it's, it's, it's cool. (laughs) That's great. How much can you make running a food truck? Like say you started from the beginning time, like in your, not your trailer, but like the food truck, the first food truck you did, like how much could you make a year running and operating if you just did that? I mean, I think that in like a six month kind of seasonal thing that it varies from like, I remember our first year, I think we did like 90,000 in sales and we've gotten it up to like one truck could probably do a quarter million plus. Um, it really depends on the, on the amount of months that you're doing it, like, and how often you're out and how many events you're doing a day and, and all that kind of stuff. So as your reputation grew, you probably were booked more than in the beginning time. You're trying to just hustle and find anything you can do, right? Yeah. I mean, so when I, when it was the beginning, I said yes to everything. I did, yeah. I did anything and everything you could imagine. I was like, let's go, you know, you want me to come to the farmer's market? You want me to come to this movie release party for 20 people? <laughs> you know, we would, we would do things that were probably not worth, obviously not worth it. But, you know, it was all about getting our name out there, getting people to try the food. They never had it. You know, we need to get our product in front of people, get them to taste it, and, and hopefully they like it. And that's what every business kind of does in the beginning, right? Like you got to say, you got to say yes to a lot of things in the beginning that you wouldn't say yes to later, or maybe you'd be like, well, maybe not. It's, yeah. it's not. It doesn't align with what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've we've cut that back as years have gone on. Like, 
okay, this event made sense when we were new. It doesn't make sense in year 10. It just doesn't, you know, the cost of everything has obviously gone up. Labor's more expensive. Food cost is more expensive. Gas is more expensive. All these things that we have to do to operate, it has to make sense for those wheels to, to drive to an event. Like it has yeah. to, yeah. Plus you probably learn, right? Like you, you did, you, in the beginning you say, yes, you do the event. And you're like, wow, that sucked. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't enough people. I didn't make enough money yeah. or it didn't go as according to plan or it was too much work. So like when you don't know anything, you got to do things in order to kind of figure out what works for your business and what doesn't. And the only way you really do that is by either doing it or knowing somebody who did it. Yeah. I mean, who's your market? You know, who's your, who is your ideal customer? A lot of in the beginning for us, it was it was a lot of breweries. That was that was a big. Um, it's kind of it's kind of starting to go down a bit in the area. But like when we were starting, there was this like explosion of breweries in New York yeah. State, and those were the places where we would go and make the most money because there were people were hanging out, they were eating, they were drinking, they were you know they would it just worked. It made yeah. sense for a food truck. I hear a lot of people say breweries for like how they get business for food truck. And I don't know if it's just like I don't go to breweries so I'm not aware mm. of it or it's not in my area, but I don't I don't see a ton of breweries like in my area in the northeast mm-hmm. Boston area with food trucks out there. I, I, but people say that all the time. Maybe it's just like a New England thing. They're just not as as prominent here. Yeah, I think it's I think it's it's just some markets have them and some don't and some of them don't do food. I know certain states like you like you can't have food trucks at your brewery. I, I want to say like New Jersey might have passed something recently where like you can't. I, don't quote me. I'm not 100. Yeah. I swear I saw something like that though, <laughs> um, where like food trucks couldn't set up at breweries, and that's just crazy. But you know, people make up crazy laws. I know it's probably somebody is probably in the background. You know, uh, I don't want to say bribing, but you know, bribing those yeah. politicians that. It would hurt their business if they had food yeah. trucks there or something. There's got to be a reason for that. Because why would that be a problem if there was no other reason for it? Yeah, I, I don't, I never, I never get that. The, the people who you know think that stopping somebody from doing something is going to is going to help them be better at running a business. You know? Yeah. I, I, the reason I talk a lot about food trucks, is, or I, I like my kids are uh, 21, 20 now, and they are they're interested in doing some possibly some sort of uh, food truck, not pizza, but like some sort of food truck to kind of start a business. And um, I'm always curious to see how people started to kind of give them a little bit of an edge, you know, if they can yeah. pull something off. And it's hard. To, it's hard as a kid to find what you want to do. Yeah, for sure. It's a hard business to get into because what ends up happening is like we've been around for, like I said, this is our 10th season, right? So, you know, there's people we've been working with since season one. Those people are going to work with us because they've been working with us, right? Yeah. So sometimes it's hard to find things. And, you know, so building it can take a little while, right? I, I think we've been fortunate to kind of be in the, in the right place at the right time and, like, you know, get into certain events that, that were in their conception and now we get to do them all the time. And it's, you know, that worked out in our favor. But doing a good job too, right? Like you, can, like you got to do a good job, otherwise they won't have you come back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you got to have a good product. You have to good, have good branding and look and all of that stuff. And um, a, you know, a few years ago, we we rebranded from like the the logo I created on the internet for cheap back in 2014, um, and had like a company come in and redo our stuff. And we made our trucks match it, and we made our our restaurants match it. And now it's all like a cohesive thing. So if someone sees yeah. your truck and someone sees your restaurant, they know it's combined and it's the same place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but you got to start somewhere, right? Like probably a lot of people start on Canva, right? Like just yeah, go there absolutely. and create a logo because you don't yeah. have money. You're trying to bootstrap yeah. it. Yep, for sure. And um, that's great. Where, uh, so, I mean, I looked at your Instagram and I think we can, we've talked a lot on Instagram. I kind of message it behind the scenes. And you guys do a great job with photos and 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 branding on there you can kind of tell that everything is really cohesive who does your instagram do you do that or who does it so i do it myself but i have a photographer that i use and then i have uh uh like a videographer that i use for some stuff and like some tiktok content and video content reels and stuff and um you know i try to use like i'm generally never putting photos that i've taken for the most part i mean sometimes i do but usually they're they're professional photos yeah um you know, because my photographer, I think, is one of the best in the area, and he, he just does a really nice job. What do they come in once a once like a month or something like that, and just do a whole bunch? 
Yeah, generally once a month and then I'll pick, you know, maybe 10 to 12 items that I'm looking to do photos of. Sometimes we'll invite friends or family to come and like be in the photos and kind of stage some stuff. Um, and then like if there's a special I want to focus on or something like that, I'll make that one of the items that we're, that we're doing content for. Is Instagram a place where people find you and like they hire you for that or do you think it's just more like a branding thing? I mean, I think people people definitely find us on Instagram. They follow us. They'll follow like our stories when we're po that's where I'll post stuff that's like from my phone is in the stories. Like yeah. if I want to snap a picture of a pizza real quick or a, a video of a fire burning in the oven or something along those lines. Like um, you know, so we definitely you know I'd like to grow it more. It's always something I'm trying to trying to increase. But um, we're, there's definitely customers who are who are following us and buying food based off a photo we post or uh, you know whatever we're doing. I, I was just going to your Instagram page, but I want, I want to give you a little tip here. Reels, sure. do more Reels because those yeah. will extend past your follower count. So right now, Reels is the only thing on Instagram that helps you get exposed to like people who don't follow you. Mm -hmm. And then try this. So we've been doing an experiment with carousel posts, which is like multiple images. And I see you have one here um, where you have like three or four images. We've mm -hmm. seen, so if say it reaches 10,000 people, so you have a Reel, in a carousel post in each one of those different posts reaches 10,000 people. The difference between the two is of the real, the 10,000 people will be 5,000 people who follow you and 5,000 people who do not. The carousel post will be 9,500 people who follow you and 500 mm -hmm. people who do not. So if you really want to okay. engage with your current followers, do carousel posts. And okay. If you want to find people who don't follow you, post reels um, cool. and mix them up. We've been doing a huge mm -hmm. mixture of those and seeing like uh, a lot of reach, but it's different reach, it, which is super cool. interesting. You'd think it'd be like, oh, 10,000 people would be the same thing, but it's really not. It's really super interesting what's happening on Instagram the last couple months. Yeah, I'll check out, try it out. Yeah, try it out and then uh, let me know how it works out. And For sure. You see, you see the same kind of data that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Do you use anything else like Facebook? I know you said TikTok. Yeah, we use Facebook. I mean, our Facebook, we've got a lot of followers, but, uh, you know, Facebook has been this kind of dead thing for a while for us. It just doesn't, we don't get as much, it's like we randomly will get engagement on it. Like we post yeah. something and then that random photo just all of a sudden is the one that people start commenting on and, and sharing and stuff. But um, it's very inconsistent for like the reach. Like we've got 14 or 15,000 followers, I think. And, wow. you know, maybe it's, Maybe it, we'll get a, a 50 to 100 people to like stuff, and it's just not. We definitely aren't getting the, the regular reaction like we used to on it. Yeah, Facebook is weird. We've seen like a, you know, so you have 15, what does it say, 15,000 followers? It, I'm looking at your page here. Yeah, is that what 14, it is? 14 or 15, yeah. yeah. And um, was that, because you started 10 years ago, so you probably started on Facebook, right? Yeah, we definitely started on Facebook. I mean, I think we had an Instagram, but like, it was more, everything was way more Facebook yeah. focused back then. Yeah. Um, you know, when ads on Facebook have always worked for us, they still work for us. Um, you know, we don't do them as much, but they definitely like people who are taking their family out for pizza are, are still on Facebook and they're still seeing these ads and reacting to them. Yeah. I think Facebook is still an okay place. Like you said, 10 years ago, though, was like the heyday oh, of Facebook and the ads. Like the you, best. Could probably, you could probably reach thousands of people for 20 yeah. bucks. Mm -hmm. in like in your target market whereas now it's yeah. not as cheap or as targeted because they took a lot of that targeting away because they had that huge data breach and yeah. that lawsuit so the things that you used to be able to target 10 years ago you just can't anymore on facebook mm -hmm. um, but you got like you said you got to like use them all i think that your audience on instagram is a little different than your audience on facebook and then your audience on tiktok is obviously way different it, you can see the difference like do a poll on instagram on facebook and do a poll where you can tell the difference of the age with the mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a poll on Instagram and a poll on Facebook, the same one. And you can tell by the answers that the demographic on Facebook was much older than the demographic mm -hmm. on Instagram, just by what they answered in that poll, which was interesting. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's cool. Yeah. It's um, just the, the answers they have. You're like, all right, now I know what, why I got to maybe use Facebook a little differently because people are a little older on there than they are. Yeah, I, I feel like it just gets younger. Like you go, like Facebook is the oldest and then Instagram's a little bit younger, but still like it's kind of 
that middle part and then TikTok is all the younger people now which like we're just we're relatively new on TikTok I think we have like 800 followers and like but what I'll do is like I'll post some funnier things on TikTok that I wouldn't necessarily like I wouldn't post it on Facebook because it wouldn't get the kind of reactions that it gets on on TikTok or something like we threw a pizza in one of my managers faces during the fair this year <laughs> and that's been like our best viewed TikTok it was like 12,000 people or something viewed it and, so, yeah that's exactly yeah. what you need to do that's perfect because like on yeah. TikTok they get it on Facebook yeah. they'd be like why are you throwing pizza at people yeah. why are you wasting food what are you doing yeah, and I'm like, exactly yeah so you gotta so. know your audience too that's a good that's smart you gotta know your audience <laughs> and where you're posting it and it doesn't always work everywhere for sure uh, that's interesting. Do you do what do you do for like email or text or do you do any of that too? Yeah, so I mean, we, we're we're Square users. I've used Square since I started because that's like that was the best thing to use for mobile back ten years ago. So yeah. um, we've got a pretty massive like a thirty, I think it's thirty two thousand email database wow. through Square, and then I have like four or five thousand uh, phone numbers for text messaging. So I use like a combination of those two. Um, and like if we're having like a slow week or something, I can send out an email and know that I'm going to instantly just increase my business that week, like because it's going to reach enough people that it's going to make a difference. Yeah, that's great. Um, so that's, that's been that's been great for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of people. But you probably got them from like this because Square is that the one that does like it'll email you the receipt? Is that how you get most yeah. of the people? Yeah. Yep. So, and sometimes people's credit cards, like the emails are attached to them automatically. Like we don't even ask them and Square will like, we'll pull it, it'll send them a thing and then they'll be, they can opt out if they don't want to be part of it kind of thing. But, um, you know, so Square collects that or it asks them to join. Like we have a loyalty program through Square where every time you come, you get, we call them slices, you get a slice and you come so many times and you'll get five bucks off or, you know, and it builds the more times you come. Oh, that's great. That's a great thing to do. I think more places should do loyalty programs like that. I would be... I like going to places that do an offer that, especially places that you frequent a lot. Absolutely, yeah. Like it's what that's a great bonus, and it's not costing you a lot. Like a slice of pizza or no. even a free pizza doesn't cost that much. No, it's a you know it's it's really for the regulars, right? It's it's yeah. a the the only people who are really benefiting from a loyalty program are the people who are coming enough to benefit from the loyalty program. So it makes sense, you know, to to give back to them and and you know they're the they're a big bulk of our of our email and text database too so we're fine to send them a coupon to come in and they're they're going to come in from this from this email blast right you know? all right i'm gonna ask you a tough question now what do you hate about okay. the food truck business or pizza business Oof. um i mean i think there's challenges in in every business right and you know uh, staffing was a challenge for a while, but that's definitely gotten better over the last year or two. Why did um, it get better? Well, I've heard a lot of people say that. Why do you? Why did it get better in your area? Just more people like needed to go back, or I think so, man. I really think that people people needed to go back, or wanted to come back, or wanted to do this kind of work. And uh, you know, we've before the pandemic, we really like never had an issue getting staff. Like we we would a lot of times I would hire like. You know, I hire someone and then they've got some friends that they would vouch for and then we would hire people that way. And it worked out really well for us for a long time. Um, and, you know, things definitely changed during the pandemic. But if I had to pick something like I, that I hate about the restaurant business, um, you know, I think I think with the food truck business, I hate the weather sometimes. Like it, it's, <laughs> yeah, that must it's be tough in the cold. Yeah, right? it could be brutal when it's like pouring outside and you're prepared for like a big event. And then all of a sudden we're getting some crazy storm and it's just, it's not there. And then I'm losing product. You know, it's not, there's inconsistencies with the food truck business, right? That's the biggest like challenge there is that you may have the hottest day ever. And then you're doing, you're selling less pizza because it's too hot. Then it's yeah. too cold. Then it's raining and it's this and that. I mean, those are like, I feel like that's our, that's one of our biggest challenges wow. on the what? mobile, mobile side of things. I never thought of that because I always operate brick and mortar, right? And like for us, bad weather meant, good sales but it's yeah. the opposite for you right like if it was it's a really nice sunny day out for us that wasn't great because people would go out they wouldn't eat as much they'd be out doing things mm -hmm. but if it was like snowing or raining or a storm people would stay home hunker down and we would just deliver to them so it's like the total yeah. opposite for you yeah well the, that's the perfect day to be at the brewery or be yeah. at the beer hall or be at the you know these different these different places the farmer's market whatever it is you know those are the those are the days that that's your best day because you're out at it's beautiful weather or a concert during like a 75, 80 degree day is the best with 20,000 people there for a concert. Like you can't beat it.
That must be you know? stressful though, looking at the weather, because you don't live in the, you live in an area like me that the weather fluctuates so frequently that it must be stressful to be like, all right, I have a hundred person event happening next weekend and there's a storm coming. What are we gonna do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I constantly am looking at the weather. I'm I, every day, um, even during the off season, I'm still looking at it because it's just now it's just muscle memory, but. Um, trying to plan out, like, because I have to, in order to project what I'm going to do during a week, like, I've got to have an idea of what the weather is going to be, and then the weather's the opposite of what they tell you it's going to be, and <laughs> all, all that good stuff. So They don't really know what it's going to be till like, the day before. The, yeah, the day of, a lot of times. week yeah. before, it's like, we could get this, but it's totally different. So what do you do with those scenarios? Like, say you have a 100-person a event scheduled for Friday or Saturday, and, it's gonna, and you're hoping it's going to be nice, and it doesn't. Does it just get canceled? No, so I mean, if it's catering, we pretty much operate regardless. The only the only time we wouldn't operate is if like it was like severe, severe, unsafe weather, which has really only happened like a handful of times over yeah. the years. Um, you know, so for catering, it's still pretty much guaranteed, and we know what we're gonna do. Yeah. Um, we may have to run food inside if the weather's really bad, and like if it's a wedding or something, and they have a lot of times we we serve outside because. It's, you want to get the experience of walking up to the truck and seeing the pizzas being made and seeing the, the fire in the oven and that, that kind of whole experience. But. So only if the wedding venue, like if you're doing a wedding, because they'll move inside. So it just all it does for you is you'd be like, all right, the, the ambiance is kind of gone. You just kind of serve yeah. food now. Yeah, and then you know, for, for the public event stuff, we just have to adjust our projections. We have to adjust our, our dough. We have to adjust our staffing. We have to cut back on some of the food that we're prepping and, and kind of plan it that way. Huh. So it's like a lot of things to think about when you're in a food truck because, versus a brick and mortar. It's like just the same. Like, oh, i got to make a little bit more dough. It's going to be a little busier. Yep. Uh, but when you're – because you're moving everything around, right? Yep. Yeah. We're, so we're loading, you know, we have a process for everything we do and like, you know, we're planning a week, we plan a week out and I'll say, this is how much dough I think we're going to go through and this is what we have to prep. And then like, there's the fermentation process and all of that to, to make, to make and, and prepare our dough. So like, if you really lose out on an event and like, you don't sell it, you know, usually we can sell it the next day for lunch, but that's about it. So like, there's been days where I've I've overprepared a lot, but I've, I've kind of gotten better through the years. Trial and error, right? Yeah, it's just figuring out, figuring out what, what we need to do and what we need to prep for and staff for and, and all that stuff. And like what I have, I have uh, data now to say, okay, this is what happens when there's a concert and it pours, right? Yeah. This is how much we're going go, to go down and we're going to prepare for that now. What's the, if you could say, all right, Bruce, this is my favorite thing in the food truck. Like, this is the favorite venue. It's the most profitable. It's the one I like to do the best. Like, what is it? Is it a wedding? Yeah, I mean, catering is always, because it's because it's guaranteed. You know what it is. There's no questions, right? You know there's going to be this many people. This is what they ordered. This is the, the pack. Like, we'll, we'll do different packages and stuff. And, like, this is the package they have. This is what they're doing. And then we can prepare for it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so that's, that's definitely... You know, if we could cater every event every day, that'd be great. But I also there's a there's a balance to that. I think that it's important to be out in the community doing public events, being at at these venues where people can just come and buy a pizza because that's how they find out about you. If they're yeah. not at somebody's wedding or graduation or whatever it is, that that's an important aspect of this business. That's great too because if you're at a wedding, yeah, it may be profitable and easy, but those people who are at the wedding probably or may not even live in your area, right? Yeah, it's very possible. So like a, a concert that's happening in your town, those people that go to that concert are probably from that area. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's all, you know, it's all yeah. tied together. Like everything, everything helps each other. Like having a brick and mortar, you come into the brick and mortar, you think about the food trucks. Oh, I could have, we could have them for our graduation party. You go to a graduation party, you enjoy the food. Now you can come into the restaurant. So it all just, it's like, I always call it a big circle. Yeah. You know, you drive down the street, you see the sign. You're like, oh, I'm going to stop yeah. in there. I went to the party last week. They had great pizza. Yep. What's the next step for you? Are you going to do more food trucks, more brick and mortars, or more both? I, I think this is I. You know, this kind of this opportunity with this new location was was wasn't necessarily something we were looking to do. We we've, we've been we've grown a lot for for only being ten years old, you know, or yeah. nine years old going into our tenth season. So um, I think it's right now. It's all about uh, it's getting this location open, and then and then it's about you know, streamlining our operations as much as we can and, and uh, you know, figuring out what the next best the next best system is or the best way to do things. And, you know, I always try, I try my best to 
always have an open mind and, and improve and and figure out the best way to do things i love it i mean go follow you toss and fire pizza on instagram toss the letter n fire pizza on instagram your website uh same thing right toss and fire pizza.com yeah. Go check them out. Go follow them. Nick, thank you again. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you got a lot going on. So Absolutely. For you to join me on the podcast and talk for a while and answer all my questions about the food truck business. It was much Absolutely. appreciated. Yeah, anytime. Uh, Thanks for having where, me. Is there anywhere else that you want to plug or anywhere else someone should go follow you or just on Instagram and your website? No, just check out our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok if you want some funnier videos or uh, Facebook website, all that good stuff. Oh, what's your TikTok? Same thing, Toss and Fire Pizza? Same thing, Toss and Fire Pizza, yep. Oh, nice. All across the board, very easy. We'll link all that up in the show notes. Nick, thank you so much for joining me on the pod. Thank you.